So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm going to. It's maybe the last time I'm going to explain about this application because I have talked so many times about this. Um, but I might just start working on another killer app or something. Uh, so, I'm introducing myself. So, I live in Brussels. Uh, I'm someone I'm really obsessed with mobile. You probably know that. If you know me, uh, I love to travel. Uh, I'm a software engineer. I have no driver's license, so it means I'm totally dependent on public transportation. So that's why this project just was something I had to do. Um, you all know that when you take public transport, maybe sometimes you're lost. You don't know where you are. You take a long bus or train. Oh, where am I now? Um, or maybe it's just. It's raining and you're out there, you're cold, just waiting. It's really not a funny experience. It's really not fun to do. Um, another thing, maybe there's a, there are some strikes. Uh, the picture I've put here is maybe a bit too extreme because it's never like that in Brussels. Well, <coughs> it is, but probably in some parts. Uh, so um, when, it, when there are strikes, sometimes there's like one out of ten buses that are driving. So how do you know that that bus will be on your line and how long you'll have to wait? You can just dream and just wait and maybe it just might come, maybe it just might never come. We've had a pretty really harsh winter. It was a long time ago since that happened. Um, it snowed a lot and when you take the bus or the train, it's just all those that. So um, you also need to know, is there a bus coming or not? And the last but not least, you just hate losing time. When you're taking public transport, you don't want to wait because you can be doing something else, something that is more uh, useful. Um, you could just take a car, but maybe you just don't want to. That's so I needed an application. <laughs> uh, I needed an application and I was, uh, because I had this phone and I had, well, the phone has killer features and every smartphone has that. So you have an internet connection, you have GPS. So you actually really, I need, I wanted to make something with those features that would be really useful. And as I told you, I don't have a driver's license. So um, Actually, I had this idea of making an application for public transport, so I had to go look for information because it actually wasn't really there. So, uh, well, it wasn't really there in a structured way. So, yes, actually, there is information, but it's just uh, I'm not. If you want to, I can do a workshop session and just explain you how I did that technically. But all the information about real-time stop information, real-time line information, the location of stops. Uh, the timetables, everything is available on the website, but one thing is just uh, it's HTML that is really bad in structure, so if you need to parse that, you need to just try five different things until it works. Um, and it's the same thing with the other things, and there are even more frustrating things because the real time information is working with one type of ID and the timetables with another type of ID and they do absolutely not match, so I had to find it. it was really hell to write those scripts. Uh, so I wrote that during some nights and um, those scripts worked. So now that I had that backend that was working, and I actually, I actually have that kind of web service that even you could use, but I'm not allowed to give it. But, uh, um, <laughs> So now that I had the web service that was made, I had to make the application. And for that, I chose Android. And why Android? It's not that I'm anti-iPhone, because iPhone has brought a lot to mobile, to what mobile is today. But um, Android is mainly Java-based. So um, since I program, since I'm a software engineer in the Java environment, this was just a logical evolution. Uh, Android is open, uh, it's really it's easy to learn. Even if you don't know Java, you can really easily start making an application. Uh, the programming environment is really nice. You have this integration in Eclipse and plugins. It's everything a developer just wants. Um, on Mac, it's not really working that well, but uh, let's just see that. Uh, 
on the side. And so really, I thought Android was just perfect for this. So um, on, on the 22nd of February, the application was finally released. It was ready long months before, but I had to talk with the local transport company because there are some new things and other things. So, um, so today, the application actually it's really it comes back to a lot of nice features. I'm going to show it them to you, and I can give you a live demo if you want afterwards. Um, the application is now actually officially supported. So if you go on the Android market, you will not see that it's published by me, but that it is published by Steve. So we reached some kind of agreement because they, when they saw it, they really loved um, the application. So they really wanted it. So uh, I just propose that we'll just have a quick look at what the application does. Um, so um, the first thing you do actually when you open the application, you get the screen. Um, it's quite simple. You have bus, tram, metro, you have your bookmarks, and then you have uh, a geolocation tab. Um, you can see in the list that you have just the bus lines, the destinations, and when you when you click one, like if I click line 47, it will tell me if we want to go uh, take the bus in the direction of the Bouguer or to before the station. And then you just pick one. Here I'm going towards uh, the road. So actually I want to know where the bus is. And I can actually see that. So you see, you have all the stops ordered by, uh, by, the, by how the bus is uh, servicing the line. And then you, see, you can see you have all those uh, dots and there is one that is filled in red and that means that the bus actually is at that stop. And so if you are, say, at Zavonbrut, you will know that your bus is coming quite soon. Why do you need to say at which stop you are? Why don't you use it your location? We'll get in. We will get in. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, once you click, actually, those are stops you can click. Mm -hmm. So, you click it and well, you just are on the screen where you can see um, when the next buses are actually coming. And you can also see what other lines are servicing that stop. Um, the stop Zabobut is also serviced by line 53. So, um, maybe at some stops it's very useful to know uh, what other lines actually are there as well and how long to take. I live uh, quite not so close to the center, but uh, in Scandic where I live, there whatever bus or tram that just comes at a stop, whatever line it is, it just takes me to the city center and that's all I need to, to know. So I do not really need to choose a line. So when I'm at that stop, I will also see what other lines come. So it's really useful information. Uh, you can also get the timetables if you click the, the timetable tab. And you can also actually view uh, in Google Maps uh, where the stop really is. Um, so maybe you just want to know exactly where it is. And that will actually show you where the stop really exactly is. Uh, sometimes even uh, when they're working on the line, it's, it's just their data is really good for that. Um, so maybe you're always taking the bus at the same stop, so, well, you don't need to always go, like, click, 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 until you get that information. Maybe you, it's, it's just better if you just have this shortcut, um, and so you can really, you press the menu button, and then you just can add it to the favorites. Um, the bookmark stops, um, so your favorites, they will be found in one of the tabs and then we'll just see. And as you can see here, you have like the different stops and there's like a distance. So the closest favorites are actually put on top 